This episode is brought to you by Perspective Space, a community gathering venue in Encinitas, California, that fosters mindfulness, sustainability, creative expression, and connection. More about them later. Hello and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast, an art podcast that has it all. I'm your host, Galena Marquez, and I invite fascinating people to talk about their personal creative journeys, success stories, and inspiration. We talk about art business and marketing, how to find your creative voice, and all the new trends in the art world, like NFT, AI, and such. Join me and my guest for today's conversation. This episode is showcasing one of many talented San Diego artists. I am deeply passionate about our local arts community and very excited when I have a chance to bring my fellow San Diegans on the show. This passion led me to start a new project, SanDiegoArtDirectory.com. It's a free platform that serves as the ultimate hub for all things related to the rich tapestry of arts and culture in our county. On the website, you can find events, workshops, arts organizations, information about the shows and concerts, anything that an art lover like you may want to see and experience in San Diego. And for fellow artists, there is an information about the open calls, grants, other opportunities, services, venues, and many other resources to help you advance in your art practice. And you can post on San Diego Art Directory too. Join sandiegoartdirectory.com, create a free account, and start posting your listings today. And don't forget to sign up for our weekly email updates. And now let's get to our today's guest. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to In the Art Scene podcast. I have not one, but two special guests today, a creative couple, Kirsten and Bryce, uh, who are getting ready to release their very special show at the community space, uh, perspective space uh, in Encinitas, California. If you if you guys don't know about this space, please go back and listen to the episode with Jonathan Hanwood. I'll make sure to put the link in the show notes because that space is doing something really cool in the community here in San Diego County. And Kirsten and Bryce are prepping. Like This is enigma of the show because in the previous conversation that we had a couple of months ago when we were just talking about having this interview, it was all in the air. But I know that you guys finally uh, created the vision and a structure and the title for your show. And I know that it's going to be very special by what you have told me in the past. So I'm really, really excited to hear uh, what what it's forming into and what it's going to look like. Excellent. So our show is going to be on December 9th, Saturday, December 9th. And we're so grateful and thankful to Jonathan for letting us use the perspective space. He's created such a wonderful community um, environment for people to come together and share any kind of work like art, or he even has um, people who do yoga and things like that in the space and breath work. So it's really a cool thing. But we're very excited about the show. We've called it Form and Flow. Um, and so we're going to have it equally divided amongst our works. Um, Bryce's work will be representing more of the form side of things, and mine would be representing more of the flow side of things. Yeah, my te- work tends to be much more uh, uh, structured and, and and formal in execution, um, whereas Kirsten's tends to be much more uh, uh, spontaneous and, uh, I guess, flowy, for lack of a better term. I have I have so many questions. Well, first of all, uh, let's talk a little bit about you guys. I know that you both are visual artists. Bryce, you are an independent visual artist uh, at, at the moment. Kirsten, you are actually a design director for Think Parallax. You work with Jonathan every single day. Uh, you came to California from the East Coast. Um uh, so just just walk me through your creative journeys. How did you end up in California? How did you form your creative styles? How did you meet? Well, we I'll I'll start there. We uh we both we met in art school way back in the 90s in Brooklyn. Uh we both went to Pratt Institute. Um I was a year ahead of Kirsten. Um, but we were both in what at that point they called the communication design department at Pratt Institute. So it was the the commercial art department, and uh we were both kind of on a, a track to study uh illustration. Um Pratt really kind of emphasized fine arts. So we had, I guess, what would be considered a more um, uh, a traditional fine arts um, type 
uh, education there. Um, and at that point, there was little, if any, uh, uh, reliance on computers or digital media that just didn't exist at that point. I guess we're, I'm really dating us <laughs> by saying that, but, um, uh, that, that's, that's where we met. Um, so, and, and, so you um, were, you were, you were literally learning, uh, how to create advertising by hand. Is that right? And, and at, at that point, that's, that's how you were taught. Uh, we were doing traditional, what they called paste up and, and art mechanicals, um, uh, at, at that point. Um, I, I, I bet that uh, that type of advertising is probably collectibles by now. Uh, I'm <laughs> sure it is. I'm sure, I'm sure it is. It's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, after after uh, graduating from Pratt Institute, um, both of us got jobs uh, at different advertising agencies and design firms um, in the New York City metropolitan area, um, and had uh, geez, what almost 20, 25 years of of career. Um, wow. Uh, in in the New York City metropolitan area, primarily in working in Manhattan, um, both of us. Um, and after after that, we uh, both felt the need for a, a change of life. And uh, we took a, about a year long sabbatical. And uh, the end of that sabbatical ended us up out here in San Diego. Um, and uh, after a couple of months, uh, we both made the decision that uh, we wanted to uh, make a permanent move out here. And uh, we dispensed with all our worldly possessions back in on the East Coast. And uh, uh, came out here and were able to uh, uh, drum up some freelance work to start. And then Kirsten started with Think Parallax. And I've been kind of a, on a consultant basis um, ever since. How long ago was that? Uh, we've been here now for seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Well, I've been here for eight. So <laughs> you guys are just a little behind. <laughs> but it's amazing. I mean, this is such a bold move, and and San Diego is such a wonderful place, especially for creative people to to end up in. And uh, and and what a what an amazing coincidence, right? I think Parallax uh, as as an agency is a very dynamic and very interesting uh, place to be, and especially to be a designer and and thinking through. You know, they they work with very uh, complex. Um, ideas for their clients for for the lack of a better word but this this podcast is not about this but what a coincidence right the the covid brought this opportunity for for um uh, think parallax uh develop into something that serves creative community in in encinitas and encinitas i i keep i keep saying that that encinitas is one of the most vibrant places in san diego county so there's no better place to be if you're an artist uh but i actually i have questions for you 25 years career in advertising in manhattan starting from manual work and uh, going all the way into digital, what was that experience like? Um, you want to start? <laughs> sure. Um, I mean, the the trends changed so fast, so it was definitely something like we always had to be up to date on. You know, even just learning the computers, getting to understand all the different applications, how to use them, and then you know, with each new version, just staying on top of it. So really making sure we were on the cutting edge of technology. I was always taking classes and um, weekend courses and things like that just to keep up with whatever was happening. Um, so it was a tremendously fast changing environment. Um, but yeah, what do you think, Bryce? Yeah, it was. It was. It was interesting as I look back on it now, you know, you, you when you're in the middle of, of, of any kind of change in life, it, it just, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but you look back on it and, you know, I realized that my, my first couple of jobs I, I worked doing, you know, very traditional print and, and direct mail advertising um, type work. And I was fortunate enough to be at a company that started doing interactive CD-ROMs when that was a thing. And this, that predated really the, the internet and the idea of a company even having a website. Um, and, and the guys who ran that company were smart enough and had enough vision to realize there was potential in, in developing websites. And that kind of became a thing. And, and I got to uh, be involved in, in that type of work. And that transitioned. I, I worked at another agency where we were doing websites for a big uh, wireless phone carrier. And they started having interest in having us develop um, apps. And then uh, that was actually ahead of the iPhone. And then the iPhone came out and the the idea of like user interface design became a thing that nobody really understood even what that was um so i get to work kind of on all those different different uh medias as they emerged 
um, and was kind of on the forefront of it. So it was it was an interesting time to to be working in New York City. Yeah, and uh, the reason I'm asking is because I, this is this is something I'm geeking on myself. You know, uh, spending almost 20 years in marketing, uh, not as a designer but as a general marketing uh, professional, uh, and being a huge fan of David Ogilvy and, uh, of course, Mad Men. I I imagine I mean Mad Men. Of course, it's a mid-century, uh, but. I know that the 90s were so vibrant and creative uh, advertising wise right because of that shift of technology so you're kind of on the on the edge from like from the manual creativity and and embracing the new technology and bringing that in and I know there was there was a boost of all kinds of creative campaigns so I imagine working for ad agencies in Manhattan for you guys it was probably Correct me if I'm wrong. Was it like a lot of boring direct mail stuff, or was it actually like, yeah, this is this is cool. This is advertising world. Um, it it you know it 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 goes. It went day to day. You know, there's at certain points it gets to be a grind. Um, certainly. Um, you know, you factor in a, a commute and dealing with the hustle and bustle of Manhattan and 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 all of that. It 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 can wear you out. Um, but it it was also interesting in that we we I, at least. I'll speak for myself. I was exposed to, like I said, a lot of like emerging technologies, and um, I was I was fortunate enough fortunate enough to work at at agencies who prioritized exploring new media um, and and wanted to be kind of uh, uh, future focused in in all of the work that they did, and really kind of encouraged um, uh, the creatives to, to to work that way. One of my favorite memories, like going back, was in uh, one of my earlier jobs. Um, we always created these special invitations, and um, we were always working with paper engineering and paper mechanics. And I feel like that's almost a lost art now that so much work is digital and online. But we would actually like make three dimensional cards and have pop ups and all kinds of neat, interesting die cuts, and things would fold and like you know emerge in different ways. And it was I always love that hands-on experience of like comping up things and cutting and making them, uh, you know, like little examples to bring to the clients to show to them. And so I feel like that part of it is now kind of a lost art, but I really enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> that's I, fun. I would say that that's, you know, that was, that was something, I guess, that in, in, in art school, the, the idea of, of, of craft was really kind of um, uh, impressed upon us that there was a, a certain level of craft that you were supposed to bring to your artwork. It wasn't all just about having a, a, a big, uh, uh, creative, inspired moment, but that there was, you know, some 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 level of discipline that that you had to have um, in your work. And I feel like, at least for my part, uh, I was able to carry a lot of that through, even in even in new media and and the digital technology stuff that I, I worked on. But it's been refreshing to kind of bring that. Kind of full circle back towards doing more you know our, our our work is is i guess you know you consider more like analog based more traditional uh painting is what i do um and it's 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 i guess refreshing in a way to kind of circle all the way back and and be concentrated more on, on the level of craft yeah i was going to ask you uh you obviously uh moved from manhattan to beach town and southern california is like it's a huge shift right from from the busy noisy uh, place to a very relaxed laid back i mean san diego could not be more laid back of, of a place right uh and uh shifting from this you know grind of advertising work and technology and everything more towards um, you know, hands-on painting. Uh, how does that feel for you? Is that was it deliberate? Uh, tell, yeah. t talk to me about it. <laughs> for me, yeah. I mean, it would say I would say it was definitely deliberate, and it, it it felt like there was a little bit of a baby step in that we, while we both worked in New York City, um, we eventually at one point we moved to coastal New Jersey, right outside of New York City. So. We, we were at least near the ocean and you had a little bit of, uh, you know, once you were home and on the weekends, you felt like you were yeah. a little bit more like at a beach town, um, the winter notwithstanding on the East Coast. But um, certainly coming out here, it's it's the 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 pace is is much slower than what it is in New York City. And for me, it's it's left a lot more time uh, uh, to kind of focus back on on uh, more fine art uh, uh, exploration. And I'd have to say the quality of life 
change of just being in that fast paced environment and working really, I would say we work longer hours in general um, to coming out to San Diego where there's more of a work life integration or work life balance um, and just getting to enjoy the outdoors all the time, like year round is so fantastic. So I think that also helps from a, just like a, an enjoyment of life in general. Yeah, I, for for sure. The, the the whole idea of the the, the concept. I don't I don't think the term work life balance. I, I that that was that was I don't know. The first ten years we worked, I, I that that was just not a concept. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and you know, 10, 12, 14 hour days were expected and considered absolutely normal um, in New York. I mean, that was and, and weekend work. That was just that's and just a long good. commute. And a long commute on top yeah. of that. that was all just expected and considered part of the trade. Um, so yeah, it was, it, it took a little bit of time when we first came out here. I think it's certainly for me to realize that the whole world doesn't operate on the New York city schedule. And I, you know, I, I remember when we were first out here, I remember people kept asking me there, they would, I would meet people out here and they, a lot of them would say, you know, what's wrong? What, what, what's bothering you? And I said, nothing's wrong. They said, well, you always seem like very amped up. And I was like, well, that's just, I guess that's just the way you have to be <laughs> when you live in New York City. And it took me a while. I feel like I've, I finally, uh, I don't know, I've eaten enough avocados out here to kind of like uh, uh, slow me down. And <laughs> I can take a deep breath once in a while and realize there's nothing wrong with that. I totally, I totally feel you. I had the same thing for the whole year when I moved to San Diego from Moscow. And Moscow was also busy and long commutes. And, you know, it's not, uh, when, when you see the city, it's more open than, than New York. New York is more cramped. And I actually had like, being from Moscow, I, I thought that I will love New York. But the first time I visited New York, it gave me anxiety. Like, <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> like, uh, Early morning, October, raining, it's dark, you know, uh, uh, metro stations are absolutely like, ah, oh, where am I? So I, I somehow made it to the Central Park, sat in a, on the uh, on the bench and like cried for half an hour before the <laughs> rain started and then stopped. And then I found a Starbucks, got my coffee, and then, you know, the day became a little bit more manageable. It brightened up for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I felt the same, same way absolutely when I moved to San Diego eight years ago uh like it, it was like it's like i moved to absolutely rural area like uh there's nothing of, well i mean in in Sinitas, there's a lot of stuff uh walking distance but where i am in uh central san diego county in Serena Valley, there's nothing you can walk to except for the uh, like one of the parks across the street. That that's pretty much it. You have to drive everywhere, which uh, in the public tr transportation is I don't know almost non-existent, and people are very slow. And it's the first time I see people uh, in the morning. Uh, like at 7-Eleven wearing their PJs and sleepers. And it's like, oh my God, <laughs> who are you people? Why are you not dressed and made up? You know, right. <laughs> right. what's going on? And then over the course of 12 months, I also felt like the seasons are not changing. Yeah. Like time stopped completely. <laughs> <laughs> It took me a little while to to figure that out, but now it's it's a it's a be best place on earth to be. I I feel like. I completely agree with you. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it took me a while to even get used to just people like pausing, making eye contact and saying hello. Yeah. In New York yeah. City, you don't do that. You keep, you know, you look straight yeah. up and keep your eyes down and you get where you're going and 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 forget everybody else. Right. Exactly. And yeah. Here, exa if somebody engages with you on the street, I, I was actually taken aback by it, wondering, you know, what they wanted from me. And then it took me a little while to realize that the, the problem wasn't with them. The problem was with me. And I, I needed to just kind of learn to, to lighten up and unburden myself. Yeah, from same the, thing. Uh, the uh, random people on the street, like, hey, how's your day going? It's like, do I know you? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you about the new friends and sponsors of the show, Perspective Space. Perspective Space is a unique venue in the heart of Encinitas, California, open for individuals and companies that promote mindfulness, creativity, sustainability, and connection through their practice. The space is open and bright and well-suited for art shows, yoga, photo shoots, sound healing, art classes, workshops, and other community gatherings of up to 60 people at a time. 
Perspective Space is a project by Think Parallax, a local sustainability strategy and communications agency that generously opened up its office for the local art community during the pandemic. I interviewed the CEO, Jonathan Hanwood, in Season 8, Episode 6, and I'm dedicating several episodes in this season to feature their artists and residents. To learn more, go to PerspectiveSpace.com or click the banner on InTheArtScene.com. It's P-E-R-S-P-E-C-T-I-V-E-S-S-P-A-C-E dot com or click the banner on InTheArtScene.com. Okay, so you you moved out here, you slowed down, you reconnected with your craft. So uh, can you describe your uh, creative styles? And, and you just touched on it at the beginning of this conversation that they're so drastically different, like they're on the different side of the spectrum. So how did you end up? How did you develop your your creative styles? What do they represent? Ooh, okay. Um I, when I first moved out here to California, one of the things I was playing with was encaustic art, which is working with hot beeswax and mm-hmm. um, colored uh, uh, colored wax. And so it was also a fluid art form, which is interesting that I ended up moving from one fluid art form to another. Um, but I just loved the smell of the beeswax. I loved working with the hot plate. I loved having, you know, my blowtorch going. It was really fun. And it really was... Um, freeing for me because I'm kind of like a type of person that likes to plan a lot and have everything organized and set up. And so for this kind of work, there wasn't really a lot of planning that could be done. It was more like, you know, you have an idea, but you really do need to be open to whatever's happening and react accordingly. Um, So I started with the encaustic art and did that for a few years and really enjoyed that. And then I was using alcohol inks as part of that. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, oh, this is its own medium. And I kind of started to explore that. So that's where I've ended up now over our time out here in California is now I'm exploring the alcohol inks and how that works. Amazing. Bryce, what about you? Yeah, my, my work, I guess, is um, I, I kind of stayed with the, the uh, very tight, uh, uh, geometric, um, uh, constrained uh, properties that I think are like happen in, in, in print or most commercial art applications. Um, I kind of embrace that and kind of lean into it with my work. So while it's not figurative, um, it, it is like very organized and regimented. And I would say the, the inspiration for most of, of my work is, uh, trying to establish some sort of like geometric harmony. Um, and it's hard, I guess it's, it's difficult to describe this stuff in, in the abstract. Um, you kind of have to see the work, but, um, I, I also, uh, uh, have, have a lot of interest in, in, um, uh, science and, uh, particularly, uh, uh, physics. Um, so I, a lot of my work is based around, uh, you know, my, my understanding or the, the geometry that's articulated in, in, in the physical properties of the world. Interesting. So how did you come up with the, uh, joint show with such different styles? Well, I mean, we both, um, you know, we, we've both, I think, been trying to kind of grow and, and you know, pardon the pun, bro- broaden our palette um, s- since we've, we've been out here. Um, and uh, we know that we knew that, that Jonathan and, and, and Think Parallax had the, the opportunity to to have um, uh, shows at the at the, the creative space. Um, so I don't know, it came up maybe about a year ago. We both said, you know, th- this would be something that was interesting and really neat. And for, for my part, I'm, I'm, I tend to be the guy. And again, I think this is something that, that was in, came to me from working in advertising. I tend to be a very uh, uh, deadline driven person. Um, mm-hmm. You give me three weeks to get a project done. I won't start it until the, the three days left. Um, so <laughs> knowing that we had the show kind of kept me on point and kept me uh, uh, focused and, and gave me a goal and a deadline to continue to, 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 to work towards to, to get the work done. Yeah. And about a year ago, Jonathan actually, um, within our company gave us, um, a challenge to manifest something big. 
And so for me, I was like, okay, an art show. <laughs> and so that was really the challenge that we took up and started working towards. And so that's been exciting. But I think what's interesting about our two different styles, even though they're quite different, is where they overlap or in interact with one another is through color and color theory. I think uh, we both work with how color creates movement and color creates kind of even emotion or even tells more of a story. And I think Bryce, through the work that I've seen from you, I always get a sense of rhythm and movement from all of your pieces through the use of color. And I think that also is an area of crossover in my work as well. Yeah. And I, I think that, you know, I, like as, as I'm sitting here thinking about this stuff, like looking back, I remember some of the, the very first first exercises they had us doing in uh, uh, an art school when we if like freshman year of art school. And we didn't, I'm trying to think, I don't think we even touched oil paint um, or paint for the first, maybe the first semester, we didn't even touch it. We just sat there. We did all these exercises using, um, what was that? Color aid. Color aid, which was like sheets of like, almost like Pantone paper. I don't uh -huh. know if you're familiar with, with what that, that, that is, but it was basically just like, cutting and making geometric shapes and learning the difference between like hue and value and, and, and tone and, and how colors interacted and worked with each other. Um, mm -hmm. And I always really enjoyed that aspect of, 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 uh, of, of playing with color. And I, I think that's something that's kind of come through to, to my art. That that's very interesting. So I, I have a question. Well, first of all, uh, congratulations on the realization of your manifest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have it and you, you, uh, you worked on the show for, I mean, you knew the, uh, a year ahead that you need to be working on the show and that you are going to present your work together. Uh, I have a question, like, were you planning, did you, each of you kind of did your own work and then you found an overlap in how to curate it or you deliberately created the work that kind of feeds of each other and uh, having an idea in mind how the show is going to be curated. Uh, I'm, I'm really curious about that because, you know, showing two such different um, styles in one place uh, is is very tricky. So you kind of I, I, I'm curious to know about, uh, to learn about your idea. And I know that even a couple of months ago when we first uh, talked about it, you kind of had an idea, but you didn't even know how to call it. Now you do. So I, I really want to learn about that, you know, that development. Yeah. So I think, I think we, we were fortunate in that we had access to the space. So kind of our, our first, the first, the way we started was, I mean, we, we had like a, a nascent idea of, of what we, the, the kind of work we wanted to do. But I, for me, we really started by going down there, taking measurements, looking at the place, and it was very much planned. Um, you know, we we each, we picked what side of the gallery or each person's work was going to go on. Took I think a, you know very precise measurements and figured out exactly like how we're going to fill the walls. Um, and it is kind of divided down the middle. It's not it's not really mixed. Um, uh, the, the work isn't interspersed, um, so it's kind of I get one half, Kirsten's got the other. Um, the back wall we're still a little bit. Fuzzy on, you know, there's, there's three big walls in there. I'm not sure how that back wall is going to come together quite yet. Um, but that was really kind of, I guess, the thought process. And for, for me, all of the work that I've made has been purposely for the show. I'm not bringing in any any old work. It'll all be all new pieces. But the interesting thing is we work in the same space. So yeah. <laughs> we have, uh, we use half of our garage. We've converted into an art studio and Bryce has, you know, I guess it's technically a quarter and I have a quarter. And so even though he's working on his pieces and I'm working on my pieces, we still are influenced by each other. Like yeah. sometimes I'll look over and I'll be like, oh, those are the colors I'm using. And I didn't even consciously like pick up on that's what he's using in his pieces. Or in fact, it's been, it's been even more deliberate. So it, in some cases, it's been more deliberate. Like she did one little piece and I, I saw the, the colors and some of the shapes she did in it. And it reminded me of something I had done, I don't know, almost a year ago. And I said, oh, I'm going to, so I've got a piece that I've just started. And I, I, I saw that some of the colors and the forms in it. I said, okay, I'm going to pick up right from that and use that as inspiration. And it kind of got, got me going. So there's, there's been, I guess, you know, crossover that way. Um, but still, I think there's, you know, there's a, a literal and, 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 and figurative separation, uh, in, in, in the work, the way the work will be displayed. Mm -hmm. 
makes sense. I mean, totally makes sense. I mean, you're you're a creative couple working in the same space. Of course, you are influencing each other. And it's actually really interesting to hear how th- those things happen because they kind of happen on their own without you even consciously engaging with this. Um, I maybe, mean, maybe maybe for the next show we'll we'll try that. We'll we'll sequester ourselves for a year and <laughs> see what each other comes up with. It'll be a big surprise to both of us. It <laughs> say we'll totally merge. Oh no 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 no. Well, <laughs> oh, that would be. Actually, that would be a really fun thing to to see. Like if if one of you starts the work and the other one finishes it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would that would be something. <laughs> so the the show is called Form and Flow. Obviously, uh, Bryce, your side of the gallery is going to be more form. Kirsten, yours is going to be flow. Um, what what do you want uh, the viewers uh, experience to be what the idea i mean i i heard you saying about the movement and the color creating the movement but with this um such drastic difference between like i'm i I just envision the space i walk in the space and on the left side is once uh, like a flow and then the right side is form and i'm in the middle (laughs) <laughs> what am I supposed to experience between this two drastically different styles? Probably a bit of tension at first as the viewer walking into the room, like, oh, where do I go? Yeah, <laughs> we could do that. We could bet on which, you know, who's going to go to, to which side first. But <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, my, my work, you know, there's not really a, a a narrative component in my work. And like I said, it, it, it's abstract, so it's it's not really figurative um but I, I i would hope that people would just kind of come in and, and and take it in and hopefully the 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 color and and the, the 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 shape work that i do um gives them some sort of feeling that they can they can they can walk away with or set, sets a mood at least mm-hmm. yeah and i think mine my colors are all very bright and vibrant and you know the the palettes and even the forms all are very flowy and have a lot of movement. And maybe, I don't know if you'd go as far as calling it feminine, but maybe a little that. Um, but what I, I it's funny because the reaction that I would want would be similar to what Bryce just said, that they would have like an emotional response or an emotional reaction to what they're seeing, whether it be pleasing or just calming. Um, that would be really nice for me. Or just even a recognition of like, oh, that looks really pretty. That, 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 moves my eye in a in a comfortable way that i really enjoy <laughs> i i feel like this could be such a great potential for a little research to kind of watch the audience and see who's gravitating toward what side yeah. and maybe yeah. even like do a little uh, i don't know some some kind of like put a little note on this side and put a little note on this side which was your favorite and then count how many people or i don't know if like women are gravitating toward one side and men are to- toward the other side uh and non-binary just staying in the middle and <laughs> spin around yeah, we need, need to have like a little closed circuit camera and like you know record all night and then you know the opening and then and then l- l- play it back like you know sped up and see where you I- know it's like you see those I bet you could do like that. How people move. <laughs> I bet you could do yeah. that. Yeah. Time yeah. lapse. Yeah, I could. Right. I, I think. I think you could. You could figure something out on the ceiling, and yeah, that would be so cool. All right. Well, um, I am out of my questions, guys. I mean, I, I feel like I learned um, a lot about you and a lot about your art, and I'm actually very excited about the exhibition. So, tell me a little bit more about when uh, the exhibition is going to happen, how long it's going to last and how people can see it if they want to see it. So we're going to have um, an opening on December the 9th um, from six till nine o'clock uh, PM. And uh, as, as Kirsten mentioned, it's at the, um, the, the Think Parallax creative space on, it's on second and E and Encinitas. It's called perspective, perspective space. space. Um, and the show will be up through for the rest of the month of December. Um, during that time, it's going to be kind of a, uh, the, the, the space isn't open, uh, like doesn't have normal business hours. Um, however, if anybody wants to see the work, um, we'll have sign up sheets while we're there. If anybody wants to come in for kind of a private viewing or just wants to look at the work again, um, we'd ask that they reach out to us. And we'll, again, we'll provide information while we're there. They can get in touch with us and we'll make arrangements to to meet them there and, and, and open the space up and let them walk through or we'd be happy to talk to them about the work. And awesome. one of my favorite holidays is Christmas, and I will have a holiday surprise at the event for um, people who also enjoy the holidays as much as I do. 
<laughs> oh, wow. Well, I got to be there. <laughs> I will make sure to put all of that information in the show notes. Uh, the link to uh, Perspective Space. Um, um, I don't know if there is like a calendar link or whatever, but you guys, uh, if you if you don't know how to get to perspectivespace.com, go to intheartscene.com, <laughs> find this episode, go to the show notes. Uh, all the link will be there. I hope that you will be able to provide me with uh, some samples of your work so I can kind of visually put it down there so people know, uh, like at least have a little teaser what to expect. Uh, and yeah, we'll we'll see you there. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Galina. This has been fantastic. Yeah, thank you very Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. I'm so happy you guys came to the show. Thank you. We'll see you soon in the art scene. It has been another episode of In the Art Scene podcast. If you liked today's conversation, please give us a good review on Apple and go listen to other great stories. Check out our website, intheartscene.com or follow us on Instagram at in the art scene for more content. If you are a creative and you want to share your story, shoot us a message from the website or DM us on Instagram. Look forward to seeing you next time in the art scene.